Hey everyone, welcome to a new YouTube series. In this series, we'll be talking about building a skin cancer classification model completely from scratch using the state-of-the-art neural networks to build this. So yeah, you know, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So this is the uh, CACL data set. I'll put the link in the description, but if you'd wanna, if you wanna like manually type this in, then you know, go ahead, I'll just give you a few seconds. So anyway, so this is a data set that, that it's a balanced data set. So basically it contains images of uh, malignant skin moles and benign skin moles. And as we can see, this is kind of our training data set. So in our training data set, we have separate subfolders for each class. And in each class, you know, there are photos. So, so each folder has around 1800 pictures. Um, so each image is 224 by 244. So yeah, you know, do install the uh, zip. So once you get the zip downloaded, um, you will get something like this in archive.zip. So what you want to do is you want to delete these test and train folders. I'm not sure why they come along with it, but keep the data folder and that's where like, all the data is. So anyway, let's just get right into it. So once you've downloaded this, you know, you should be here. So as of right now, you know, pause the video if you have, if the data is still downloading and you know, once the data set is downloaded, feel free to come back here. So anyway, Welcome back. So this is by our data sets, you know, test and train. And then in each class, we see that there are images. Um, so yeah, you know, let's just get straight to coding this right into VS Code. Uh, I'll be using TensorFlow Keras. So TensorFlow Keras is the implementation of the Keras API. And it's a very, it's a high level API for TensorFlow. So it's very you know, easy to use, it's very straightforward to use. So, you know, good to hear. Um, we can, so with uh, data pre-processing, so, you know, before we talk about data pre-processing, let's just import TensorFlow. So import TensorFlow as TF. We'll also import NumPy and uh, import NumPy and matplotlib. So import matplotlib.pyplotsplt. If you don't have any of those installed, uh, you know, pip install TensorFlow, pip install NumPy, you know, pip install matplotlib. So if you, if you don't have any of those libraries there, you know, just go to your command prompt, install all of them, you know, pip install matplotlib. So, okay, anyway, so uh, now that we've covered that stuff up, uh, let's just get, you know, straight right into it. So let's start defining our train path. So, you know, our train path is where our data set is, so in data and then in train. So that's kind of what we'd specify. Um, so train path is equal to dot dot slash slash. Oops, hold on. So dot slash slash data slash slash train. So remember that in Python, we need to put uh, double slashes for directories. We can just copy paste the same thing. Test path is equal to data. And then from data, we have test. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, you know, let's talk about data preprocessing. So TensorFlow has their own library known as image data generator. And basically with this image data generator, we can perform something known as data augmentation. So what data augmentation is, is that it's basically a way that we can generate a lot of images given like a singular image. So, you know, for example, we can also over here, like with these images of cats, we're able to generate a lot more images of cats. So, you know, for example, here, I might move the image. So this is like known as like a width shift range where I move the image to the left. So we can also, you know, perform shears where we like you know, transform the perspective of an image. And this is kind of what allows us to generate a lot more training data, especially because we have like a very limited amount of data, 20, I think it's around 1800. So something like this could help us a lot with you know generating a lot of data. So anyway, let's just import that. Um, so you know, let's just get right into it. So from from tensorflow dot dot preprocessing dot image import image data gen generator. Um, so now that we've imported that, we can also you know just get straight into it. So let's also specify your image size. So uh, with neural networks and when we're training our model, we want to make the images squared. And notice here that the images aren't squared. They're, you know, they're rectangular, so 224 by 244. So, you know, you want to make sure that they're squared. So, yeah. Anyway, so let's just do that. Uh, so, you know, let's call our uh, image data generator. So augment train data. So we can make this a variable where we're going to perform data augmentation on the training data set. So let's call image data generator. And now what happens after that is, let's call the uh, certain data augmentations we want to perform. So in this case, we can perform like horizontal flip. So horizontal flip is equal to true. So we will return an image of the of a 
our image being horizontally flipped. We can also do like rotation range. So I guess you can set it to whatever you want. I'm, putting, I'm just going to leave it as 50 for now. You can also do zoom range. So I'll make this 0 0.2. So how much we want to zoom in on the image. So I'm going to put it as 0 0.2. We can also do width shift range. So basically, do we want to move the image to the right or left? So width shift range is equal to 0 0.2. I'm going to leave it as 0 0.2. You can also play around with this. Height, shift range, shift range. I'm also going to leave it as 0 0.2. I mean, you can always play around these, all these, you know. Let me know in the comments if you know anything that specifically works. What we can also do is we also want to rescale our data set. So basically, we want to normalize it. And what this means is our pixel values are between 0 and 255. And we want to bring that threshold down. So by dividing everything by every single pixel value by 255, we're able to get a threshold between 0 and 1. And you know, this allows for the model to learn faster and be able to learn better. We can also perform a validation split where we generate images for our validation data set because you know, we're not given a, a validation folder. So we can leave it at as 0 0.1. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, you know, let's also do it for our test set. So, so augment test set is equal to image data generator. And now what we can just do is we can you can play around with augmenting your uh, test set as well, but I'm just gonna leave it as normalization, and you know, just I'm just gonna normalize it and leave it. So anyway, so now right now is we haven't really performed the data augmentation. We just called the function. So now what we can do is we can now specify our train data set. So train data set is equal to image data. No, sorry. We want to do augment train data, and then from augment data we want to do something called flow from directory. And what this allows us to is it'll it, it'll call all the images, and for every single image in the directory that we pass in, it'll resize and perform all these functions that we specified right over here into the image. So, okay, now that we specify that, um, we also want to specify the target size. The target size is basically, uh, what is the image size that we want to rescale to? So we put it as image size, come image size, and so now we get it square. We can also specify our batch size. So basically, our batch size is how many images are we gonna pass into the uh, the neural network, so our model at a time. We can leave it as thirty two. Um, that's the default value. Batch size is equal to thirty. Oh, batch size. Okay. We uh, you can also play around with like smaller values. Remember that you know the trade off here is with smaller batch sizes. It's like a uh, time and performance trade off. So it'll take more time to train, but you'll get higher accuracy. Same thing, vice versa with like. Higher batch sizes, higher batch sizes will result in you know lower accuracies but faster times. So anyway, now that we've done that with our train set, we can just you know copy paste it. Um, test set. Okay, so now that we call this, we can just specify this to be test set. And yeah, so now that we're technically done our data preprocessing, actually, you know, image data generator take care of everything for us. So now what we can do is now that we finish this. Let's kind of like visualize some of our data sets. So now that we've performed all this data augmentation, you know, let's perform it. One thing we can also do is we can specify uh, shuffle equals true so that the model doesn't see everything in the same order. So whenever the model trains, we can get like different images every single time. And that can allow for the model not to overfit, which basically means the model does not memorize the data and instead it learns. So let's define fig. So fig is equal to plt of figure. So we're just like creating a like a canvas, I guess you could say, where we can print out our images. So I'll, I'll specify this to be 15 by 10. So after we just import it. So now we can do after is, we let's just print like the first images. So like the first eight images. So for i in range, we can say one to nine because matplotlib works with their subplot sub indexing works from one and not zero. So what we can do is plt.subplot four to i. So what this basically means is we're creating a sub subplot and what we're specifying here is that we have four rows and two columns. And now what we're calling is for the first row in the first column, this is what we're going to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a PLT in I'm show. And I'm show basically allows us to print out an image. And we can get like grab the first image of the data set. So grabbing the data set from the data set, we want to grab the first batch of the data set. And then we want to do, we want to get the index I minus one. So we want to get the image at I minus one. So in this case, we want to grab the zero with the image. So one minus one is zero, and then we can work our way up. So yeah, let's do that. And you know, let's also call plt.show. So let's get that running. In it, got an unexpected shuffle equals ooh, right. shuffle 
Well, your shuffle goes in. Uh, it goes in this. So we don't specify shuffle key. It's true here. Um, we 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 don't need to shuffle the test path because it the test set because it only sees it after training. So we just leave that as it is. Um, okay, let's give it a run now. And you can see, like now it says I generated, I found 2,637 images. And let's try this right over. And yeah, now you can perfectly see that we've grabbed like the first eight images of our trained data set. So yeah, we can do something like this. Um, we can also, you know, if you want, we can visualize them in like a three by three grid. So we can just do something like three, three, we can make this 10. Now we've done something like this. Now visualize this. And yeah. Now what happens is, notice that now we can now we printed like a three by three subplot of all our images. So now you can see everything's like two twenty four by two twenty four. So you no, know, good to hear. So in the next episode, um, I think I'm gonna end it off right here. In the next episode, we'll be talking about convolutional neural networks, and next episode we'll be building our model and actually seeing it train. So you know, stay tuned for that episode, and until then, goodbye.